are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. Host of Locked On Rays, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making the Locked On Rays podcast your first listen every day. And remember, the podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Rays. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And you can email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Uh, Ulysses, normally we have a what we learned from the weekend takeaway ep- uh, episode on Monday, but because mm-hmm. we had the crossover episode with the Locked On Blue Jays crew, we pushed our takeaways episode a day. So we have Takeaway Tuesday. That's a better name, honestly. Yeah. Takeaway Tuesday than Monday Takeaways. I don't know about you, but it's- it has a ring to it yeah. for sure. So without further ado, What did you learn, observe, take away from the Rays baseball weekend or baseball weekend? Well, I learned that, boy, it's award season. Mm -hmm. And Rays fans, as passionate as they are, I feel like sometimes every baseball fan and every sports fan will always have a bias. Hello. We have a bias, right? Too. We we you know seeing everything, reading everything, watching everything about this team. And you you obviously are going to be very passionate about it. But I I think Rays Nation got a little bit heated with KK not getting the Gold Glove, mm-hmm. his fourth one. The the it would be the franchise leading Gold Glove. He's still tied for number one with uh, Longo. Unfortunately, he did not get it, Kevin. He did not win the Gold. Love, he just went up in arms. How he was snubbed and all that. I understand where they're coming from, Kevin. But um, it was a tough one because I wanted to be a real <laughs> homer and say that he was snubbed again. But if we're being impartial, they both had a case for it. And Taylor, I think he had the edge. He had the edge. The, the, the numbers. Uh, Taylor beats him in outs above average, fifteen to twelve. Uh, he was graded with better routes. Uh, KK does beat him in five-star catches, 23.1% to 8, 8.3%, and reaction time as well. Uh, but Taylor got has KK beat in defensive war, 15.3 to 8.9. Has him beat in de- and defensive run saved, 19 to 13. And, of course, we have to always talk about this. KK did not have as many innings as Normally, you would expect from outfielders, especially center fielders. Um, Taylor has him by almost 300 innings. Uh, yeah. He played even more. So, as a race fan, I understand watching KK patrol the center field. Kevin has been a joy to watch for the last eight years or mm-hmm. so. He had a case for it, but I, I do think it went to the best center fielder this this year. Yeah, and credit to Michael Taylor for reinventing himself and putting him self on the right track and this is a guy that if you watch some of the highlights what's really impressive is playing center field he's about six four six five yeah and to be as athletically gifted and agile as he is 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 commendable for sure although the one thing i would say and you know i'm, I'm not really hurt or i'm not outraged that kk didn't win it i'm not outraged that joey wendell didn't win it i'm not outraged that Randy Arozarena didn't win it. Um, What I will say in KK's favor is uh, the catches he made and the plays he made, I feel like generally were in bigger spots with more stakes. Okay. Michael Taylor was playing for the Royals. Yes. Is it really, okay, you make a great play against the Twins or the Tigers, and you're on the road to nowhere. Your team's not going anywhere. There's not that pressure, that stress, that we need this play to be made. We need to win the division. We need to find a way to uh, build some steam over the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Blue Jays. We're playing for something here, and things get a little bit tighter, a little bit more pressure-filled. And It's, it's kind of, I don't want to say easier, but it is, in a way, easier to play loose and fun and make a great play when 
uh, you're you're on a bad team, and and there's not like oh we th this play has to be made. So I would give that. That's where I feel like KK definitely stands out. And as much as we don't want to acknowledge it, there is sometimes a little bias in the offensive component that ties into the right. goal glove. But I will say KK was actually better than league average in center field offensively. I, I found out this is courtesy of fan graphs, the uh, league averages for center fielders, 242, 314, 405 line. KK had a 259, 328, 388 line. So that's just my spiel. I wasn't like, Oh my gosh, how did the Rays not come away with a goal glove? I, you, you made a point about the innings. That was the same thing for, for Randy and, and Ben Intendi. I mean, Ben Intendi played 1,100 innings in left field. Yeah. Randy played basically half that, 600 or so. So, and, and that's just the DNA of this team. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're going to platoon, you're going to put guys, you know, versatile. You play left today, you're going to play right to, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, trying to get KK uh, off his feet because he plays in turf, because he's had the injury pass. So, all of this plays into it. Uh, that doesn't mean that they are bad outfielders because we say that somebody else should have gotten the right. award. Honestly, I like we said last week, KK had the best shot out of Wendell and Rosarena yeah. and, and himself to get the gold glove. So that's why I'm putting the spotlight on KK. Uh, and even so, if you are a race fan, a homer at heart, and which is completely okay, seeing all the numbers, this Michael A. Taylor does not not have the case for for being a gold glove winner i i think he outright does i love that though love that inside of, of yours kevin where does it matter most mm -hmm. an eight to zero game against the twins right where nobody's going anywhere everybody's yeah. going to be on their couch on october 3rd or playing in the ales going for 100 wins uh, where everybody had a shot at the division with 10 games left mm -hmm. so uh, i i take your point uh, anything else you learned from the baseball weekend, it being award season and so forth? Well, yes. Yes, I did. Um, a couple of things. Kevin Cash has uh, been nominated for Manager of the Year okay. once again. And also, we've got not one, but two nominees for Rookie of the mm. Year. So we put up a poll today saying, line in the sand, who do you think should win? between Randy Rosarena and Wander Franco. Do you know what the latest percentages of that poll uh, are? Uh, I believe it's about pretty overwhelmingly in favor of Randy to Wander, about two-thirds of the voting populace, 66% for Randy, 33% or so for Wander. Exactly. And I, I feel like that's a good gauger of... of where things are going to happen. I I think it's an honor just to be honored if, if mm -hmm. you're Wander Franco because of the of the lack of games. I think I read somewhere that I forget who it was. Was it Willie Mays? Some it was some ridiculous big name in baseball lore that it hasn't happened where they win rookie of the year with as little games played as mm -hmm. Wander Franco had. Right. So it's just it's a historic thing that he's already even been nominated for the, for the amount of games that he yeah. was played. So this to say, I expect Randy to come away victorious in the Rookie of the Year award uh, against Luis Garcia and and uh, Wander Franco, and that will help me in our prop mm. bed review episode, Kevin. I actually, I actually think that Wander is going to win this thing, being that he is named. A finalist. Oh, In wow. fact, I would not be surprised if the voting is Wander one, Luis Garcia two, and Randy three. Wow. Because you talk about Wander and being in the same breath as Willie Mays. I think, I think it was Willie Mays. I think. Don't don't okay. don't quote me. Uh when do when do these votes have to be turned in? By the BBWAA. Before the first wild card game. So no okay. playoff games can be played. I think some recency bias will be at play in this thing. I think Wander Franco's 43 game on base streak. I think his post all-star break surge. Let's not forget he hit 314 in the second half of the season. In fact, he was the best rookie 
in the second half yeah. of the season. From the all-star break on, he led all AL rookies with a 314 average, 69 hits, and 45 runs, all while playing a very premium position in shortstop. And I'll say this. I, I'm i hesitant to... I, I'm not trying to take away what Randy has done this year. Had a really, really, really good, solid season. 2020 player. We, we can talk about all the metrics, but... Hey, we had him on our player review. Yes. He had a 93 from us. That's, that's true. That's an A. He's 26 years old, and he's been in three postseasons already. At some point, it's like, is he really a rookie, though? Play by is the he rules. really a rookie? Each year, a one rookie of the year at 27. And Okay, fair enough. Still little apples and oranges with sure. Ichiro coming over from Japan. Um, and I think that there were some higher expectations from some based off what Randy did in the 2020 postseason. That right. you know, if he was if he had a 30-30 season this year or 35-35, if he just yeah. went bonkers and continued to some extent that play from the postseason, but I feel like there's still a little bit of a letdown from some, which is nuts because he had I a know. 2020 season. And I know you know, but, but I'm just saying, we, I love that you said recency bias because remember when they were voting yeah. that uh, for for, the, for this award, you have to think what was happening in Randy's life. The 2020, mm -hmm. he got that stolen base the last weekend of the season. Yeah. So I think that those articles got got him a little bit of of. Um, of confidence with the voters and also recency bias. Let's not forget that Wonder Franco got hurt his hamstring in Detroit yeah. running the basis. So he actually missed like 10 games. So I think that also plays into the recency bias of not playing enough games, not doing enough, not being on the field as much. as. Yeah. Randy. I just feel like people have the on base streak in mind. They have the feeling of the, the biggest, name prospect to come in years i think that has a little, little bit of cash to it yeah for sure uh player right now wander or randy better today not who's who right, has the better yeah, career path right but now. who is the better baseball player i haven't seen randy rosarena as lost as wander was his first month mm -hmm. ever i've never seen randy be that lost have we ever seen wander be as hot as randy was in that postseason that's a good point i don't think so randy did not show shy away this uh, playoffs either so i'm not ready to say that wonder franco is better right now than randy rosarena but he's like yeah. so close it's like yeah by decimal points really but let me say this. If there's a guy who could win rookie of the year playing 70 games, it would it's, be Wander it's Franco. Wander. It fits yeah. the profile. It, it, it's got to be. It, that's good. I mean, you're twisting my arm yeah. here. I'm still going for Randy because I want the prop bet uh, to, to, to come out victorious. But you make a solid point, man. You make a solid I think point. it's going to happen. We'll <laughs> find out in a couple days. Uh, we first, we've got a lot more to talk about on today's show. But first. First, we've got to tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Be sure to head over to their new updated desktop or mobile website. To sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, just use their promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to receive that bonus. Bet online, it is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, and it is where the game starts. Uh, getting to some listener comments here from the Randy Wander debate. Uh, Ty McCann says, Randy, while Wander picked up the struggling team, there is something to be said about the body of work in the majors, everyday availability, gold glove nominee, and the offensive stats back up production. Not an award for most talented rookie, but just the best rookie season. But again, do the voters always vote that way? That uh -huh. is the question. Um BSC010203. That is some that, Twitter account name if I've ever and he has a he has a profile picture oh, too. Really? So how about okay, that? I was gonna say that, uh, that sounds like a box. Yeah. 
Uh, it could be a bot. Who knows? Who, who knows in this day and age of anti-social media? He says, uh, or I, I don't even want to yeah, presume if it's a uh, he, a no. she, a they. This person says, right. I want Wander, I want Wander to win it all, uh, but it's going to be Randy for sure. And then Tampa Bay, AJ. I, okay, that's a better Twitter account name. Oh, my goodness. Uh, kind of sucks they're wasting both of them in the same year. Wander <laughs> should have been for next year. So is, is that the idea to... to I, I would hope so that you just like want to save Wander so he can get the ult, get the rookie of the year <laughs> award like that has to be a joke. That's yeah, funny. I think that's a little bit yeah. trolling there. But yeah. uh, getting to uh, something I learned from the weekend, Mike Zanino is returning to the Rays in 2022. His seven million dollar option was picked up. I mean, this had to happen, too. I can't believe – look, we know the Rays are cheap, but they can't be this cheap to where they would have to hesitate on a move like this, you right? Know, I, I didn't want to sweat it out as much as a lot of people seem to have done. Like, mm -hmm. dude, have you read uh, – do don't. I know you don't, so that's good. But I I spent some time looking at the, 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 the responses at Topkin's tweets oh, about God. it. Oh, my goodness. Dude, there are some people out there that just <laughs> – dude, everything has to be a, a crap a storm. Like, dude, just like, oh, well, it's too so – like, we get it. We know. But, like, well, he's probably going to get traded. <laughs> well, and then they're going to get – you know, guys – Settle down. Yeah. Settle down. Just just say cool. That's awesome. I'm glad they did that. I'm glad they got a guy who can hit 30 bombs, handle mm -hmm. 38 different pitchers, put up good defensive run safe, uh, 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 defensive framing analytics, Yeah. be an elite defensive catcher. I'm glad they got that guy for $7 million. Let's, let's go raise. Raise yeah. up. It's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just stop. God. They're not trading him. Is that what the theory yeah. is oh, that they'll so trade him to save money? They're gonna trade him. Oh, who are they trading him for prospects now? It's like that's which is so illogical because most of the time race trades are actually really good for the team. Yeah. So th this, but this be point always about Stu making everything about Stu. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, we understand we're going through some. Hardships right now as, uh, as race fans. Why do we always have to put the focus on the stadium, yeah. on 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 the cheapness of the owner? Can we just sometimes just say, "Yay, we're keeping the thirty yes. homer catcher, the thirty three homer catcher there who did go. it in hundred nine games." And I've I've said this before. I've made this joke, but it's really not even a joke. I felt like this past season, every Zanino at bat was a must watch at bat. Every ten at bats, he was going long. Yeah. So, I mean, he had one of the best home run per at-bat rates in the game. Yeah, yeah. he's going to strike out a ton, but when he made contact, uh -huh. it didn't matter the launch angle. It didn't matter where it was pitched necessarily. When he put barrel literally to ball, good things happened yeah. for the Rays. So, good for him uh, to – we talk about uh, incentives and how important that is. I mean – $7 million overlooking your head. Yeah, you're going to work hard for that thing. And, you know, to, just to your point about uh, the, uh, are the Rays going to pick up this option and then trade him? If the Rays didn't get rid of Mike Zanino after batting 147 and 165 the last two years, they're not giving up on Zanino now to save a couple of bucks. But they're cheap, there. Kevin. $7 million for the Rays is like so much money. Like, oh my yeah. That whole diatribe. Okay, just focus on the positives. When the positives happen, they're keeping a guy who hit 33 bombs, who can handle 38 different yeah. pitchers in a in an elite way behind the dish. That that's a good thing. I wouldn't be surprised if there's conversations because I think, look, I don't think he's going to replicate what he did this past season. This was his career year. Yeah, I mean. I, Look, this was what else uh, could you expect if this yeah. wasn't his career year. And besides, seven million dollars, Kevin. Like, how much of a trade off would it be? Like, if you get a two million catcher, three million dollars, right. like seven million, it's yeah. it's it's okay. But my point is, I think that you know whether he hits thirty three home runs or hits eighteen to twenty two home runs and gives you a two ten average, they value so much of what he's able to do with 
the defensive end of things and the leadership end of things and working with the pitching staff that I would not be surprised if they take a page out of the Atlanta Braves playbook. And if Zanino's rolling a little bit during this upcoming season that they say, you know what, we're going to give you a little extension action. We're going to give you a one or two year extension like Mm -hmm. the Braves did with Travis Darno and like they did with, Charlie Morton. I guess some of it is contingent on the development of Francisco Mejia, Rene yeah. Pinto, who was added to the 40 man, yes. Blake Hunt, Ford Proctor. But I, I think they really, really, really like what Zanino brings to the table. And uh, I hope, look, like I said, I don't think he's going to replicate what he did this season, next year, or ever again. But I think that there, there's somewhere, there's some middle ground between his awful seasons and his best seasons. But he's at least – he's clearly figured something out. He's clearly healthier. Yes. And I think that's a big thing of knowing this is what I did with my stance, with my swing, with how I prepared my body and got ready game in and game out, that this is what I need to do to perform at – he knows what it, it takes to perform at Pig Zanino level. And, and I think that's a good thing going forward. And no outside noises of like, oh, am I going into a new a new organization? No, you know everything mm-hmm. now. From 2019, this guy it takes has time been, sometimes. Uh, it takes time. And 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 one thing uh, I kind of want to point out before we, we move on, <sighs> dude, this guy took a pay cut. Yeah. Remember, come the, back. Yeah. He took a pay cut. And and the race still wanted him, but not at four mil. Mm-hmm. So he signed for 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 two mil and, and change. Like to believe in yourself so much to say no, no, I'm I can take the pay cut because next come next yeah. year I'm going to get those seven mil. And he did that. That speaks to that guy's work ethic, Mike Zanino. I mean, we, we, we've 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 talked to um, Charlie. Yeah, scout. Charlie Aliano, Aliano, scout with the Cincinnati Reds, who has a relationship with, I mean, he works with Mike Zanino's dad, Greg Zanino. And and without even prompting him, he just gushed about Zanino's yeah. work ethic. And and it, it really shows. And I, I think race fans should be happy that this was picked up. Do not focus on your extension deal because I think Zunino wants to stay in Tampa. He's a you, Florida boy, Florida man. You you take the pay cut. They trust in you. They keep playing you. You have your career year. You're two hours away from where you went to high school. Yes. And, and your parents are here. I, I feel like that is a very, very real situation. If we were to put a poll right mm-hmm. now on Twitter to say who is the most uh, uh, contract extension hottest candidate and we were to put zunino's name on there he would get there last mm. but i'm with you kevin he might be the 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 the, the most yeah. you know attractive guy to get him to sign right now it's so funny because i think look what zunino has been able to do by himself has certainly man I almost dropped my water there oh man that's not gonna show up well on video <laughs> um i think that the the pandemic shortened season helped him out a little bit from the perspective of able to rest and retool the body. You didn't have the grind of, oh, okay, I've got to play 120 games at catcher and mm-hmm. it just wears on you and wears on you as you get. I mean, he's been around, he's played a lot of baseball over the years, a lot of catcher over the years. And I think that finally having a good number two, or at least a guy that can, yes, the, the Rays can trust in Francisco Mejia to say, hey, can you take, 60 plus games uh you know can you help us out here or at least a a little bit of a time yeah Yeah. give us a a legit timeshare to where that eases things off of zanino a little bit and and that's that's huge for him i think going forward of course you know he's a big guy he's a strong guy pound for pound one of the the strongest baseball players out there just being able to maintain that flexibility and staying healthy and not have the soft tissue injuries pop up a little over under action for you okay ulysses uh, for Zanino next season, 24 and a half home runs. Oh, boy. Over, under. And I will throw in the caveat or just a little backdrop here. 33 this season. He had 25 in 2017, 20 in 2018, and 22 in 2014. So he's only crossed 24 one other time. Yeah. And you want me to say over? Ah, oh, come on. Under. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Two, Fair enough. Two, I, I, you can't play against the odds lap that way. Okay. Although high risk, high reward. I mean, if 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 it's me seeing you with a beard, 
Maybe I, I do. Oh, no, over. that never. Not a beard guy. <laughs> Not a beard guy. Um, speaking of catchers, Ulysses, uh, one last thing from this Takeaway Tuesday. Uh, I guess it's a bittersweet or maybe just a bitter moment. <laughs> I guess it just brings up bad memories if you're a Rays fan. Uh, Buster Posey announced his retirement late last week, and it just brings back what could have been. He could have very well been in a Rays uniform. And, of course, we know the story. The Rays didn't draft Buster Posey. They drafted Tim Beckham instead, and they had very, very differing careers, uh, mm -hmm. clearly. But uh, before we get into that a little bit, I want to throw this question out to you. Buster Posey, Hall of Famer, yes or no? Does a bear poop in the woods? He does. As my friend would say. Yes. I, and I, again, okay. I, I got to stop getting on anti-social media this much. People are actually making an effort to prove that Buster Posey is not a Hall of Fame catcher. Like, what kind of mental gymnastics do you need to pull to say that Buster Posey is not a Hall of Famer? An MVP, a batting champ, a three-time World Series champion? Yeah, those just grow on trees, yeah. Kevin. Let me just get one of those over there at Publix real quick. A career 302 hitter from the catching position and one of the best, one of the best defensive framers of our generation as yeah. well. <laughs> I, 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 this guy is is that's why we, it still sucks to yeah. to talk about Buster Posey because we think, hmm, what could have been? Uh, 2010 playoffs, 2011 playoffs, 2013 playoffs, 2019, 2020, 2021 playoffs. Yeah. Just one of those. Could Buster Posey have been the X factor? I think yes. Yeah. You know, you look at the story of Buster Posey, and it, it's funny because the people that don't believe he's a Hall of Famer, I mean, if we're going just by, and you got to look at war a little bit different than catchers, but Buster Posey is a higher career war than Yadier Molina, at least according to baseball reference right now the one maybe i i don't think that he's going to be a first ballot hall of famer no but i think he eventually gets in he eventually slips in and um we talk about buster posey i think and, and we talk about what makes a guy a hall of famer not just what he did in a giants uniform and winning three titles within five, five years. years within his first couple of years but you look at the big picture you look at no character drawbacks. What so yeah. you, you've talked about this before with the Hall of Fame. They always use the character clause as a drawback instead of a positive yes. thing. Yes. Buster Posey, what I mean, the the quintessential professional yeah. and a guy who's adopted children. But besides all that, like we're, we're talking about the story of Buster Posey. There, there's a rule. There's a Buster Posey rule. There's a yes. rule. He, in a way, changed baseball a decade ago. And this is what kind of bothers me the most when it, it's the offseason because now we get everybody's hot takes yeah. on, on the Hall of Fame, including ours. Hot take. Um, look, the integrity clause has got to work both ways. I love yeah. that you said that. It has to be a negative. If you if you want it to be a negative, sure, okay. But it also has to help out people. How many players have not gotten into the Hall of Fame that could have if they just added the integrity clause, just like mm -hmm. they did somebody to not go into the Hall of Fame? So uh, that yeah. that's not 100%. And, and second of all, let's not forget what the Hall of Fame actually is. It's a museum. Mm -hmm. So in a museum, you're trying to tell a story. In this particular museum, you're trying to tell the story about baseball. Winning three World Series championships in five years – is not an easy thing to do for a whole yeah. team for one player to be in all of those teams, even more difficult. Yeah. How can you tell the story of baseball of the last decade without mentioning Buster Posey? You simply cannot. Mm -hmm. So that is also something that needs to be talked about the hall of fame. It's a museum. You need to tell the story of baseball throughout this museum, the yeah. players, the stories, what happened? How can you not include players that literally change the game of baseball 
by being players themselves yeah. and, and by being in the middle of the greatness that happened while their career was, was going on. Uh, Buster Posey is a Hall of Famer. And one more thing. The first ballot Hall of Famer, I understand what you're getting at. And, I, and, and, and yes, he's not a first ballot. But do you know what the most beautiful thing about the Hall of Fame is? One of the most beautiful things about the Hall of Fame is that it doesn't matter if you're Ken Griffey Jr. Mm-hmm. or if you are Edgar Martinez. Yeah. They don't have like a little stripe that says first ballot. No. Right. First year, 15th year, 10th year, 15th for, for those that are as old as we are, Kevin, when it was 15 years. Uh, now it's 10, the maximum. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you get in. It doesn't even matter if you get in through the Veterans Committee. You're a Hall of Famer. A couple marks on Buster Posey. He's one of just five catchers to win a batting title. And of the catchers currently enshrined in the hall, only Yogi Berra, Mike Piazza, and Pudge Rodriguez posted higher marks in all three triple crown categories of batting average, home runs, and RBIs. And he had a peak between 2012 to 2017. He was basically, if not for a guy named Mike Trout, he was by all measurements, the best position player in baseball aside from Mike Trout. Now, the one thing that gives me maybe a little bit of hesitation is um, Jorge Posada is not in the Hall of Fame. So I wonder if that and and I guess we got to wait and see on Joe Maurer, too. Right. Right. So maybe. You know, with Posada though, it, it's 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 the defensive lacking yes. uh, uh, there that I think is going to drive. But he back. also won four rings, and the the offensive numbers are pretty darn good from the catching position. They're really good. They're really good. So, but again, I, I think when you yeah. look at the overall components, I think Buster still got to be got got to be. And uh, kind of tying this into the Rays a little bit, I have a little bit of a theory as to why the Rays didn't draft Buster Posey. Oh, boy. Hot take. Okay. Give it to me. So besides the – let's take the – what we consider to be the higher upside high school shortstop. Sure. I think maybe the Rays had some thinking of – because it was 2008 when that draft was. Yeah. Dionne Navarro was an all-star. Yeah. You had John Jason. So I think that they maybe thought that's your position for the next decade, decade yeah. or so. Although if you could just look at Buster Posey and say, he does not have to be a catcher. He's yeah. at first base. You stick him at DH. He's going to hit no matter. This is a guy <laughs> who literally had one of the best, if not best offensive seasons in college. Division yeah. one baseball, the ACC. There was a year where he batted 463. On, on, you know what? I, I kind of like that theory because before I think 2012, maybe even a little bit later mm-hmm. than that, the race scouting uh, uh, development people started saying that they only looked at not what they had, but best player available. You only yeah. started hearing that about eight years ago. Right. So maybe before eight years ago, they were like, well, no, let's look at what we need and then draft that instead of, look, I don't care if I have three catchers. Mm -hmm. If he's a really good catcher, I'm going for him. I think maybe your uh, conspiracy theory might uh, might have some. We might have to have somebody on from the front office of, 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 of the yesteryears. We might have to. We might have to. And it's so weird because it's not like, I mean, they had had success with drafting college players before that. David Price yeah. was clearly going to be a dude. Evan Longoria yeah. was going to be a dude. And then I think in 2006, they drafted Jeff Neiman. So there was a little bit of a history there. Uh, Let me pose a question yeah. real quick. What do you think is the worst thing to do as a front office? Bypass Buster Posey for Tim Beckham? Mm. Or say yes to the Chris Archer deal if you are... The Pirates. Oh, what's a worse move? I'm going. I guess should, we might have to wait on the Pirates thing, but I, I'm sort of leaning towards Buster Posey, Tim Beckham, because you also have to think about. Clearly, they did not do their homework, or did they, they did not in that era care all that much about character and makeup? Because if you look at the guys that they drafted around those couple of years, you had Tim Beckham, who I think. I don't think he's a bad dude necessarily. I think maybe there was some 
Yeah. Look, you're you're for the next for his entire life, he's going to be living in the Buster Posey yes. shadow. But Josh, Josh Bailey, Sale, Brandon yeah. Martin, like there was, I mean, they had some whiffs mm. big time. Um, but you also have to think about. All right, we got a 17, 18 year old, and we're going to hand him six million dollars, six plus million dollars. You got to know what you got to know. Yeah. And Buster Posey, again, maybe same thing happens, but and I don't want to compare a guy, one guy's character to another guy's character, but you look at how successful FSU was and academic all American, all these accolades that Buster Posey had racked up. You could tell that this guy's mature beyond his years. I mean, honestly, I, th I think it's always trickier to to draft high school guys because yeah. you don't know, but they're more fungible, right? You, they don't have right. as many things that that you have to change or whatever, but we've gone long enough on this bus. Yes. To tirade, uh, I know. So I guess in, in a way, uh, I guess in, in less five, six, seven years from now, we'll have to circle back and say, what could have been yeah. with the race? Could you just imagine Posey and Longo? Ah, uh, don't make me. Do oh, yeah, I can't, it. I can't. Yeah. They did pretty good in, in, in the, with the giants this year. Until he got that hurt. That is true. Yeah. That is true. But oh. uh, congrats to Buster on a great career. And I agree with you. Yeah, I think he's eventually going to make it into the Hall of Fame for sure. On that note, thank you again for making the Locked on Rays podcast your first listen every day. Now make your second listen the Locked on Bets podcast. That is your daily one-stop shop. For all your gambling needs, Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q and expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Thank you all. We will talk to you tomorrow.